close your eyes and watch your breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. And try to breathe in a way that's comfortable. You can try long breathing, short breathing, fast, slow, heavy, light, or any combination of those. See what kind of breathing feels best for the body right now and allow yourself to just stay with that sense of ease as you breathe in and as you breathe out. It's a very simple way of finding a sense of well-being inside. And you notice it doesn't take anything away from anyone else. It's, this is your breath. You can do what you want with it. So you might as well breathe comfortably. Give the mind a good place to stay. This is an important principle in our search for happiness in life. Is that we want a happiness that doesn't harm anybody else. And that kind of happiness is rare. The Buddha listed three things that are good. But happiness that spreads all around. There's generosity, virtue, and then there's meditation. In all, way, in all these ways, you find happiness in a way that, at the very least, doesn't harm anybody else and in some ways can actually bring positive happiness to them, too. As with generosity, you gain because you've developed a good quality of the mind, the ability to see that somebody else needs something, you have more than you need, and you're willing to share. And that can be anything to anybody. And that doesn't have to be material things. It can be your giving of your time, giving of your energy, giving of your knowledge giving of your forgiveness. All of these are things where you benefit and the other side benefits too. The same with virtue. You hold yourself back. There are things you could do or say that would harm yourself or harm others, but you say no. And there's a certain pride and a certain sense of well-being that comes from that, that you know that you're a person with principles. People give you a million dollars to lie and say nope, which means that you have a precept that's worth more than a million dollars. But both of these things depend on the strength of the mind, because it's so easy to start thinking about, well, I want this and I want that and to hell with everybody else. That's why we have to develop meditation, starting with goodwill, realizing that our happiness can't depend on the suffering of others. And that you, you yourself, if you go through life with ill will towards other people, it's, it's like having a burning ember inside your own mind, inside your own heart. And it's good to expel that with thoughts of goodwill, realizing that we all want happiness. And if there's any way we can help one another, we're happy to do it. Once you can develop this attitude inside, then generosity and virtue become even easier. Which is why the Johns always used to say that when you're making merit, and that's what these three activities are called, they're called merit. When you're making merit, you want it to be complete. Because otherwise you start being generous and you just start going through the motions and it gets, starts getting dry. Or you observe the precepts and you start feeling hemmed in. But if you have a mind of goodwill, a heart of goodwill, then you realize those boundaries that you're placed on yourself are not confining. They're actually protecting you. It's like having a fence around your house. You may say, I feel confined by the fence, but you realize you're keeping a lot of bad things out. And you've got a good space inside. And the mind of goodwill can go beyond the fence and go after all beings. You think of all the beings in the world, all the beings in the universe, all those planets out there that they're discovering. A lot of them have beings too, I'm sure. You wish even them well. In that case, your mind is infinite, and it doesn't feel hemmed in by the restrictions of the precepts. So you've got generosity and goodwill extending out in all directions. You've got your virtue as a fence, but you've got these other qualities that go beyond the fence. This way you're protected, but at the same time you're not confined. This is how we go about finding goodwill, excuse me, going, finding happiness in our engagement with the world. The world is going to be imperfect, but we try to make our minds impassive in, in the face of those imperfections. Resolve that our goodness isn't going to have to depend on the goodness of others. We want it to come flowing out of our own hearts. So we have to develop that quality of goodness, which starts with goodwill, and then expresses itself in generosity and virtue. That way you can live in this world with a sense of ease and realizing you have no enemies. There's no one to whom you feel ill will. So your mind feels at home everywhere. And that's a very large, expansive place to be. So don't let your petty desires and petty prejudices get in the way. 
we, we want happiness for everybody. Now, it's not the case that everyone will find happiness, but as far as our desires for the world, we want to make them that everybody finds happiness. Start with that as your basic operating principle. And you find that generosity and virtue flow naturally from there. <laughs>